In this chapter, we're going to look at draw length. Now, me and Neil are going to demonstrate to you the key factors that you need to take into consideration when making sure your draw length is correct. Now, firstly, I'm going to pick up a draw length bow, which is correct for me. And Neil's going to show you the factors that you need to be looking out for to make sure yours is. The key thing to note here is Liam's got back to his draw length and if you follow the arrow and his back elbow it's close to being an extension of the arrow, it's either level width or very slightly high. That's a perfect draw length. Also notice his front draw arm is not locked out and overstretched and locked and it's not excessively bent. We're now going to take a look at what a bow would look like if it was too long for me. So we're going to use this bow to demonstrate that on. As you can see on this one, the anchor point is right back here where Liam would like to be somewhere around there. So you can see there's an inch too long at least here. Also his arm's probably a little bit straighter than it would normally be because he's trying to swallow up that extra long draw length. Liam would find this very difficult to hold steady in the centre of the gold. We're now going to take a look at the common problems of when a draw length would be too short for you. We're going to demonstrate that on this bow here. Here you can see instantly as Liam's drawn up, when he hit the stops on the boat, it came to about here on his face and he was about two or three inches short of his face. Now, because the bow won't go any further in draw length, to get the string on his face, he's had to bend his arm, which is now excessively bent. This bow would be difficult for Liam to shoot accurately. Hopefully, this short chapter here has showed you the factors that you need to be looking for to ensure your draw length is correct. Now, if you think that it's not like the correct one we showed you, maybe you need to look at altering the draw length on your bow or changing the cams. Now, as I mentioned earlier, in the basic setup of a bow, on the single cam system, cam timing is not so important. It's not something that I worry about. Now, on the hybrid cam system that we looked at, it is slightly more important. So what I'm going to demonstrate to you now is what correct cam timing should look like. You'll notice that as Neil pulls the bow back, the cams rotate. Now, as the cams rotate, the black modules also rotate, which are attached to them. Now, as the modules rotate, the flat spots on the bottom and on the top should turn around and hit the cable, which actually causes the bow to stop. Now, what we're looking for when a bow is timed correctly is for both modules to hit the cable at the same time. Now, as you can see here on Neil's bow, the top cam is actually hitting slightly after the bottom cam is hit. So where we're on there, we're still slightly off at the top. Thanks. So what we're going to do now is we're going to time the cams by twisting the cables up. To do that, we're going to need to put the bow into a bow press and take all the tension off the string and cables. Now, if you're not familiar with how to time cams, it might be a good idea if you go to your local pro shop and ask them for some guidance, and I'm sure they'll be willing to help you out with that. So we've now got the bow in the bow press and we've taken all the tension off the strings and cables. So what we need to do is we need to rotate the top cam more. So in order to do that, we need to lengthen this cable here. So we're going to do that by taking it off the cam and taking two full twists out of it. Now 
Now that should bring the cams back into time. So we're going to take it out the press now. Okay, so now we've got the bow out of the press, having it taken two twists out of the top cable. So now hopefully, if Neil pulls the bow back for us, we should be able to see that the cams are in time. As Neil pulls the bow back and the cams rotate, we can see that the two black modules are actually stopping on the cables at exactly the same time, which they weren't doing before. Okay, so we can now see that the cams are in time. Hopefully, this has given you an insight into what cam timing is about. Cam timing should hopefully make your bow work to its optimum performance.